Okay, it's um, Monday, January 23rd, 1.21 p.m. 2023. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start talking about the Twin Tower attacks. And I'm going to start with this letter from 1798. And I'm going to cover a ground that I've covered before, including this letter. And I'm just going to do the best that I can do with the information that I've got. So I think that, I don't know exactly, it's hard to know exactly where to start. Do I start with the official stories or I, apparently I'm starting here. And the reason why I decided to start here is I want to, I want to start um, by what I think is basically behind this stuff, the crime, which is um, essentially this group that's called itself the Illuminati. So with regards to these so-called conspiracy theories and so forth and so on, I will say that in the years past, I have read through various sources. Um, these sources come and go online, and these sources sometimes contain valid information. Often it's all mixed up with a bunch of other stuff, um, or there's not quite enough information to quite latch on to. Um, there is has been some kind of group called the Illuminati that's um, hasn't been written about much in the past, although there's a lot more on them now, like on Wikipedia. I'm not sure how much of it is accurate. So a big one of the big issues with this crime is control of information. And information is controlled in a number of ways. A big way that information is controlled is it's erased. It's like erased large scale. Another way that is controlled is it's simply omitted from sources, all publications that anybody reads, except maybe very fringy ones. And, and when it shows up, on, even on fringy ones, it doesn't usually last long, um, just because probably there's not as much power behind these publications. So. Um, Probably the only reason this particular letter survives is because it happened to be to President George Washington. And so for that reason, people held on to it. There, there was other stuff published about the Illuminati in the 1700s in the United States, but um, most of it's very hard to find. And probably most of it would just vanished. Um, <clears throat> what I think the Illuminati are, were and are, are a group of people, they're, you know, usually associated with Bavaria, the name Weishaupt, which I've heard translated as wise head, but it really means, it's really white, white, it's Weishaupt, white head. Um, and head as in, not head as in the head on your body, but head as in the head of an organization. So the white head of an organization. Um, Weishaupt. Weishaupt's first name was Adam, so there's the idea of the first man in there too, possibly. Okay, so first man, white head of an organization. Bavaria, Germany. What they seemed to do was infiltrate other groups. That Their MO seems to have been, based on what I've read, infiltrating other groups, number one, um, and number two, um, falsehoods. So just being false. Um, and in a theatrical way, maybe um, seeming to look, act like it's funny, right? Um, uh, this word snickitude is coming to me. Snickitude is, <laughs> snickitude is so funny. Snickitude. So this lemony snicket attitude, it's this idea of an attitude. I didn't come up with this word. This word has been pushed at me telepathically a lot. Um, snicket, like snickering, right? To snicker about somebody, an attitude, having an attitude. And that's actually what this letter is, by the way. When we get to, I'll get, I'll, I should read the letter. Um, but yeah, but just um, falsehoods. Um, um, they present themselves as being intellectuals and so forth and so on, but it's only in the most, um, uh, there's the word sophist. Um, just, it's not, they're not real intellectuals. They're like thieves with enough, um, you know, they're clever, right? And the thing is, I'm talking about us and them, right? I, I use the word them a lot, but they, they infiltrate, right? 
So when I say them, it could be anybody, right? It could be anybody that associates themselves with this attitude, this group, and basically this crime. So the way that they have gotten power is by um, is by infiltration, right? And 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 and, and infiltrating the most powerful um, institutions and um, rewarding people for participating in the crime. So this is down to family level, from family level, right? My own family, thank you very much, not to um, the United States government, executive office, and beyond. That's where you find the Illuminati. And I mean, so it's everybody, right? So it is kind of stupid. I mean, not stupid, but it doesn't, it's sort of a misleading to talk about us versus them and all of this kind of thing, because it's almost like, do you choose, and I do think this is a choice. Uh, yeah, there might be consequences to go against this group, you know, or this, this attitude, this idea, this crime, there might be consequences to go against it. But in my mind, the consequences of participating in it are your complete integrity. And that's worse than anything. So, um, I just, I just don't have a lot of sympathy. You know, it's, it's, it's about as sympathetic as joining the Nazi party. So if you are sympathetic with Nazis, then I guess you can be sympathetic with Illuminati, you know, mentality. And it's basically one and the same. So, um, it's just interesting. I just picked up on something just now that I hadn't picked up on before. And that's this name Snyder. So Snyder is, um, it's a word in, it's interesting that it's spelled like this. I, I never actually really realized it was spelled like this. I thought it was actually Schneider, S-C-H-N-I-E-D-E-R, which is the German um, name Schneider, which means somebody, it's actually like Taylor, like somebody who cuts. Schneider, to Schneiden means to cut. So to cut means to kill, right? To cut somebody out. Um, it's actually anglicized, Snyder. Um, but what I didn't pick up on before is when Chris was in his first band, Bodhi, um, one of the band members, probably the oldest member of the band was nicknamed Spider, S-P-Y-D-E-R, he spelled it. So there's that play on spy, S-P-Y, and spider, something that creeps along and bites you. So Snyder, Spider. Um... The 22nd of August, uh, you know, it's dated the 22nd of August, right? So the 22 is the number of the fool um, and the number of the, um, you know, the star of the East Bible verse 220. I don't remember what book, Matthew, maybe. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. I, sometimes I think the numbers, the numbers mean something, but then they get applied to something else to try to say that they mean something else. And I think that that might be going on with this number 22. I think what number, I think that any doubled number has to do with twins, assassinations, um, from what I can tell. And um, 22 and two also, the number two also has to do with assassinations. So 22, two, those are both probably linked to assassinations. 33 is also linked to assassinations, the twins. Um, and their assassinations, twins linked to, I think, this the twin sons. That's me and Chris now, because it's every seven generations. And by the way, I think that, you know, those of you who think it's really cute to murder people for money and, 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 and prizes, and because that's what this is about. Um, Chris and me, our role, I think, at some level was to actually end this. And, you know, and so these Illuminati infiltrate and try to keep it going because they profit from the crimes. Um, they'll convince everybody that you get your next chance in the next seventh generation. So you're, we're talking 200 years from now. that They're going to keep this thing going. And if they can manage to actually stop the change that needs to happen at the 200 year point, just like they're trying to do now, they've already murdered Chris and I'm, I'm being tortured physically every day. I'm endangered. Um, if, 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 if we can't do this, do you think that you guys are going to convince them or, or end this before the next 200 year cycle? I mean, give or take, it's about 150 to 200 years. You know, people were taking this way too lightly, but that's part of this snickitude, right? Part of the snide, snide attitude that people have about human life. 
And so anyway, this person who calls himself G.W. Snyder, right? What does G.W. stand for? Cut. Snyder means to cut. G.W. is George Washington's initials. Now, I'm not saying this is a made-up name. Uh, it could be. I don't know. I mean, I don't know enough about, you know. There's no way to really know because these guys have so much control over um, publications. There's no way to really know. I, I don't think from this far back, whether unless there's a lot of documentation, whether any given person really existed or not. But um, um, even if it is a real name, it doesn't matter because he knows he the person who writes this he knows the irony in this, and that's part of why this letter was sent. Um, Seventeen is also the number of the star in tarot, so. 22 is associated with the Order of the Eastern Star, which that, that didn't start until 1850. 17 is the number of the star in the tarot deck, and 9 and 8 added together makes 17. Um, so, <clears throat> Fredericktown, Maryland, August 22nd, 1798. He's writing to George Washington, the, um, who, the first president of the United States. You will, I hope, not think it presumption in a stranger whose name perhaps never reached your ears, to address himself to you, the commanding general of a great nation. I am a German, born and liberally educated in the city of Heidelberg, in the Palatinate of the Rhine. I came to this country in 1776. Um, 1776 is the official birth date of the Illuminati, you know, it's the Illuminati that actually identify themselves as such. Um, I believe that that is because um, the number six related to the lovers, that's a captivity. Now, this is all, you know, based on the tarot, but the tarot was based on, I think, an older numerology. So six is the number of the lovers. That's a captivity um, number, being captive, held captive. Seven is the chariot speed. Um, 17, again, is the star, but 1776, 77, six added together it is 13. That's death. So Speed plus the lovers equals death. And Courtney Love is linked to the lovers, by the way. So speed plus the lovers is linked to death. The number 13, 7, 6. Um, so death star, right? Star death. 17 is star and 76 is 13. That's death. Death star or star death. Star death, really, is what it is. Mirror play is a big thing in this. So this is mind control. These guys are These guys were always doing mind control, going way back. Um, and the mirrors are used in mind control in a number of ways, and mirrors are associated with mind control. It has to do, I think, partly with hypnosis. More recently, you know, it's places where cameras are hidden sometimes. Um, okay, so 1776, star death. And felt soon after my arrival a close attachment. So that's why he, that's why he mentioned this, I think. And felt soon after my arrival a close attachment to the liberty for which those Confederate states then struggled. So a lot of times they say the opposite of what they mean. And which, by the way, you know, came out in the book 1984, 48, 84, um, where um, people say the opposite of what they mean. Freedom is slavery kind of thing. So, a close attachment to the liberty for which these confederate states then struggled. The same attachment still remains, not glowing but burning in my breast. At the same time, I am exulting in the measures adopted by our government. It's weird capitalization. I don't know whether to read too much into it, being as he's German, and Germans have different capitalization. Uh, and even back then, you can read the Constitution, the capitalization is even kind of weird in the, in the Bill of Rights. I've, I feel myself elevated in the idea of my adopted country. I am attached both from the bent of education and the mature inquiry and search to the simple doctrines of Christianity, which I have the honor to teach in public. So he's he teaches the simple doctrines of Christianity in public. And I do heartily despise all the cab, cavils of infidelity. Our the, our present time, pregnant with the most shocking evils and calamities, threatens ruin to our liberty and government. Secret, the most secret plans are in agitation, plans calculated to ensnare the unwary, to attract the gay and irreligious, 
and to entice even the well-disposed to combine in the general machine for overturning all government and all religion. So what he's doing here is he's writing about the danger of the Illuminati, right? I don't know if I believe that. I think, I, I used to take this letter on its face value, but over the years, I've come to think that this letter is snide, that the letter is um, warning him about, is warning George Washington, but it's actually gloating more than warning. It's, it's, it's a gloating disguised as a warning. That's what I think this is. I think this letter is actually worth a lot of study and discussion, but that doesn't happen. You know why that doesn't happen? Because the Illuminati infiltrate everything. They infiltrate educational institutions. They infiltrate publications. It's all about finance. I mean, I've been calling this finance because finance is easier for people to mentally wrap their mind around other than Illuminati, but they're very closely tied together. It was some time since that a book fell into my hands entitled Proofs of a Conspiracy, Etc. by John Robeson, which gives a full account of, the society, of a society of Freemasons that distinguishes itself by the name of Illuminati, <clears throat> whose plan is to overturn all government and all religion, even natural, and who endeavor to eradicate every, every idea of a supreme being and, to, and distinguish man from beast by his shape only. Um, so he's equating the idea of the Illuminati as people who are anti-religious. Um, in a sense, almost what the American government did, which was to separate church and state. Um, so another thing they do is confuse people. Um, they say, it's, it's so common for them to say that they mean one thing and to mean the opposite of what they say they mean. Um, and so, um, it's also really common. They want people to believe in God and supreme beings. And the reason why I believe in, uh, unfortunately, Freemasonry in general is like this. They want everybody to believe in God. And the reason why, and they don't even really care that much what God you believe in. If you actually read Freemason, Masonic literature, it's weird. Like the, there's this concept of the Hermetic Kabbalah, which is a bunch of a mishmash of religions. Um, mishmash together. And I'm not saying all Freemasonry is into this, but a lot of Masonic writings are like this. Um, and don't forget that writer Waite Tarot was created by a Masonic group. Um, so there's different levels of um, occult attitudes in Masonic groups, but they're all, they all dabble in the occult. There's all occult sim symbolism involved in all Masonic groups. And a lot of them, or in general, you know, the more established masonry, at least with their outside public, outside communications, indicate, act like they're mainstream Christians, right? But if you read what the stuff that they read, and you look at the symbols that they use, it's not at all like that. It's very occult. So it's, it, that's another, from my perspective, that's another type of mind control. Here they are telling you that they're one thing, but they're showing you by their actions and by their use of symbolism that they're something completely different. And when they explain their symbols, they deliberately mislead people. And, and most people know what, what these symbols actually mean, so they know that this is misleading, and they are taught to accept this and to compartmentalize these lies. So... Um, you know, it can, it becomes really difficult to figure things out. Now, this can be, you know, I guess fun and useful if you're a writer creating a fictional, um, you know, landscape. But that is not useful in terms of figuring out the truth of something when the truth is also actively being suppressed. So the lies are being put forward, but the truth is being suppressed. And that's what we're dealing with. And that's the increasing situation because... I feel that it's an increasing situation because, um, I mean, I don't know if I could say why exactly. I think it has to do with the crimes, that the crimes are getting so big that um, people are afraid to speak out.
and they're rewarded for taking one path and punished for taking any other path. And that's just the simplicity of it. And these biomedical implants are key to that because as long as these biomedical medical implants are being covered up, the crimes can get very, very, and have already gotten very, very, very big. I mean, to the point where we can wipe out most or all of our population. So he's talking about an Illuminati that had their own lodges. I don't, he, I have never heard of that going on in my lifetime. It may, it may exist, but it probably doesn't. I think nowadays the Illuminati and maybe even back and probably even back then, what they really did was infiltrate other lodges or other, other organizations. And that's why, I mean, that's a clever way to run an organization, right? It, it you're hidden or half hidden all the time, but it ensures survivability because you don't just close down your club because your club exists everywhere. That's why I say, you know, even if we, it becomes obvious that the CIA was behind cr crimes such as 9 11, um, or part, well, the CIA was behind it. Uh, even if it becomes obvious, this, the, the entity will continue somehow. I, I don't want it to. I'm not saying that because I want it to. I'm just saying, maybe it wouldn't. I mean, maybe if people talked about it out loud, it wouldn't. I mean, we could potentially have the CIA. I know I've gotten way ahead of where I was intending to go. I've jumped right to the end of the story here. But um, we could say the CIA, um, we could actually have a CIA that operates as advertised and get rid of all this occult murder part of it. And in fact, we could even get to the point where the occult murder part was not protected anymore. And the way to do that would be to expose it with speech. But truth, it has to be truthful speech. It can't be these stupid, you know, misinformation, disinformation campaigns. And it has to, it's going to have to involve the um, exposure of the um, biomedical implants. Okay, so... Um, all right, it was, uh, uh, all right, I'm going to read, go start here. It was some time since the book fell into my hands entitled Proofs of a Conspiracy, etc. by John Robeson, which gives a full account of a society of Freemasons that distinguishes itself by the name of the Illuminati, whose plan is to overturn all government and all religion, even natural, and who endeavored to eradicate every idea of a supreme being and distinguish man from beast by his shape only. A thought suggested itself to me that some of the lodges of the United States might have caught the infection. So he describes it as an infection now. He starts with a lodge or a society of Freemasons, but then he describes it as an infection, and that's what I would call it. A cancer, an infection, right? Cancer. And might cooperate with the Illuminati or the Jacobin Club in France. So, so okay, that's interesting. That explains why this is sometimes called France. France, the name France is is equated with these crimes a lot. Um, and maybe it's because of the J Jacobin Club in France, which I had not heard of before. Um, Fauché is mentioned by Ro Robeson as a zealous member, and who could doubt of Genet and a day? Have not these confidants and have <laughs> have not these their confidants in this country? They use the same expressions and are generally men of no religion. Upon serious reflection, I was led to think that it might be within your power to prevent the horrid plan from corrupting the brethren of the English Lodge over which you preside. So he's making the assumption that George Washington presides over the English Lodge. I send you the proof of conspiracy, etc., which I doubt, by the way, I can't find any copies of this publication. Um, proof of a conspiracy, etc., which I doubt not will give you satisfaction and afford you matter for a train of ideas that may operate to our national felicity. If, however, you have already perused this book, it will not, I trust, be disagreeable to you that I have presumed to address you with this letter and the book accompanying it. It proceeded from the sincerity of my heart and my ardent wishes for the common good. May the supreme ruler of all things continue you long with us in these perilous times 
May he endow you with the strength and wisdom to save our country in the threatening storms and gathering clouds of factions and commotions. And after you've completed his work on the terrain spot, may he bring you to full possession of the glorious liberty of the children of God, is the hearty, most sincere wish of your excellency's very humble and devoted servant, G.W. Snyder. So there's a response to this. Let's see. So there's footnotes. Um, let's see. So John Robeson's Proofs of a Conspiracy Against All Religions and Governments of Europe, published in Philadelphia in 1798, was in G.W.'s library at his death. Now I imagine this is George Washington. This letter from Snyder initiated a flurry of correspondence between him and G.W., George Washington. George Washington replied on September, 25th September, sir, many apologies are due to you for my not acknowledging the receipt of your, your obliging favor of the 22nd, um, whatever, it was August, right, and not for not thanking you at an earlier period for the book you had the goodness to send me. I have heard much of the nefarious and dangerous plan and doctrines of the Illuminati, but never saw the book until you were pleased to send it to me. The same causes which have prevented my acknowledging the receipt of your letter have pre have prevented my reading the book. So he's sick. He's already sick. Hitherto, namely the multiplicity of matters which pressed upon me before and the debilitated state in which I was left after a severe fever had been removed. So my question here was George Washington being murdered. Because I can trace murders of this type in my family going back to the 1800s. And they're, they're linked to doctors. And so this is another thing that's being kept quiet through these, you know, esoteric means, or this es esoteric attitude, is the fact that doctors are doing murders. And have been for centuries. And I don't understand why... The attitude is to silence this and, and behave, like as if behaving is going to get you out of it. These doctors are not just killing bad people. They're, they're killing innocents. They killed my great aunt. They imprisoned her. They falsely called her crazy, which, by the way, I'm tracing a lot of this to Chicago, by the way. Um, they falsely called her crazy, tricked her, um, locked her in a horrible mental institution where she died of tuberculosis at the age of 27. And then another great, great aunt died in childbirth when a doctor chopped up the baby inside her womb. So those are two murders that happened. And I know that they were murders. Just, I didn't at first get it, but after I, you know, these were stories that my grandma told over and over. And when I sort of parse the stories and understand the, the placement of these women, I realized they were murders. So, um, and they were both brutal murders. Um, and they, were, they aren't the only people in my family that I've identified as having been murdered, either medically or through biomedical implants. I mean, there's, there's several others. Um, so my family aren't a bunch of, you know, they, they don't deserve that. But this is, you know, this is, I mean, I mean it's exactly like Hitler. I'm not, it's not exactly like Hitler because Hitler had more, more, he was able to do this stuff more openly, but the mentality of it is like Hitler. It's, it's maintaining, it's gaining and maintaining power, um, through medical abuse and, um, silencing people using this as a, a means to silence people. And also, um, 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 horrific i have to i have to keep saying this over and over and just why um <clears throat> i mean i guess i will until some until it finally sinks in um that this is unaccept not only that this is happening but that it's unacceptable um and that it needs to be exposed right it needs to actually be exposed it can't this 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 coded language is not good enough because nobody decodes the language there are no publications where the language is decoded why not there, there are publications that decode the language falsely, 
That's not freedom of speech. When you're only allowed to actually publish falsehoods but not the truth, that's not freedom of speech. That's the opposite. So, um, yeah, what Hitler did was more, more out in the open. And, you know, <clears throat> but yet what's going on here is open enough so that people can witness it and see it. But I think that they they are free or expected to rationalize it and think that um, it won't happen to me or it probably won't happen to me or if I get on the right side, which or being which the side of the, the crime, the crime side, then somehow I'm going to be protected from it. None of this is correct. I mean, I, as far as I can tell, I don't think anybody's immune from these crimes. Um, very few anyway. I mean, you know, every once in a while there, there'll be an outlier that is permitted to live a long life, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're, you know, their whole family gets that. I don't know. I just, I, there's no way to explain, you know, there's, there's, a, there's enough randomness or seeming randomness to this that there's, there's a, there's a way that randomness works, right? Inconsistency works to keep people off balance. So like, for example, when I experience torture and punish, quote unquote punishment, it's not really punishment, it's just torture. Um, it's not, it's not punishment and it's not consistent. And the reason is because they want to traumatize me. They don't want to actually modify my behavior. Not that, I mean, I don't think that behavior modification of that type really works or is effective or, you know, but they don't even, they're not even trying to do that. They're just trying to traumatize. And that's what the inconsistent application of torture and murder creates is this sort of um, trauma effect and, and they exploit then the trauma. Um, so yes, George Washington's already sick. So he, when he does write back, he says, um, his main goal with this letter seems to be correct the error that um, he presided over any English lodges. I preside over none, nor have I been in one more than once or twice within the last 30 years. I find this interesting because you will find all over the internet these references to George Washington having been a Freemason. He's going out of his way here to distance himself from Freemasonry. And that's actually a bit remarkable considering that this was the 1700s and Masonic groups were still very powerful. They were powerful all through the 18th and 19th centuries. Um they're probably still powerful now in their own way, but um, not not like back then where like, you know, the, back then they may have been taking the place of other types of, or, you know, other types of social net works and nets and things like that that we have now through governments, schools, uh, and so forth. But um, again, now it's like an infiltration thing. It's everything's, it's like this infiltration into our other institutions. Um, so anyways, he's distancing himself from Freemasonry. He has not even been in a lodge more than once or twice within the past 30 years, he says. I believe, notwithstanding, that the, none of the lodges in this country are contaminated with the principles ascribed to the Society of the Illuminati. Well, he had another thing coming. Um, he may not have understood it before he died, but he clearly didn't understand what was really going on. Um, or at least he didn't seem to. He didn't read the book either, he said. So he was either didn't want to read it or didn't want to admit that he had read it. He was distancing himself. So then, let's see, he it looks like he's written somewhat how in the middle of this, the second a second letter is written before he receives the response. And he writes again. Um, he seems to be very, let's see, I guess I should read it. Um, I have since been more confirmed in the ideas I had suggested to you concerning an order of men who in Germany have distinguished themselves by the names of Illuminati, German Union, reading societies, and in France by that of the Jacobin Club, that the same are now existing in the United States. It also occurred to me that you might have had ideas that purport when you disapproved of the meetings of the democratic societies 
or ideas to that purport when you just disapproved of the meetings of the democratic societies which appeared to me to be a branch of that order though many members may be entirely ignorant of the plan so the plan being apparently to disintegrate religion and government both those men who are so much attached to the French principles who have all the marks of Jacobinism, they first cast off all religious restraints and then become fit for perpetrating every act of inhumanity. And it is remarkable that most of them are actually scoffers at all the religious principles. It is said that I don't feel like reading this whole thing. Um... The foundation of their sanctuary is laid with lies and every stone of the superstructure reared with falsehood. Yes, I agree. I'd say that's still very much the case. They are laboriously employed to excite discord, To but still, I, being as this was written by G.W. Snyder and George Washington is already sick, I really, I really, really wonder about this guy's real intent. That it's because okay here's 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 this this is what i've experienced i make all these videos on youtube right thousands of videos i have thousands i literally have thousands of videos on youtube it's a bit scary actually um <clears throat> i have a few followers right very few followers on youtube because of, i'm blacklisted right and the followers that i do have do not use their real names, rarely upload their own videos. Um, they maybe have a couple playlists, um, but most of the playlists are weird and creepy. Um, when they try to interact with me, it's usually to disrupt. Um, sometimes they seem to agree with me, but what they're really trying to do is get me into this sort of conspirational thinking mentality while also getting me off the topics that I'm talking about and onto their version of a conspiracy. So, um, as if this is just a conversation to be had ad nauseum, and clearly the conversation has been going on ad nauseum because this is from 1798. Um, so this might be what this is, that it's, you know, let's get George Washington worried about a conspiracy as he's dying, which is kind of what actually happened with Chris as well. Chris was dying and trying to cope with that. And all of a sudden, all these people started to bug him about all kinds of crap, mostly girls, women, you know, if you could call them that. Um, that might be what this is. It's just a little more fancier because it's the 1700s and it's a letter instead of some YouTube comment or text message. So blah, 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 blah. Um, There, this note about the Illuminati is basically zero information. I mean, it doesn't really help much at all. Um, oh, it is it, now that here it is. Well, vice helped. That's that is wise, I think. I've seen it written as vice helped with two s's. It's the difference between one or two s's. Um, so the thing about this is this this is the problem. This is a national archives, right? The Illuminati have infiltrated our government so much by this point that um, they've infiltrated everything, even even the way footnotes are written on things like this. Um, it's sad. It's really freaking sad because I mean, at least the founding fathers had they really had, I think, good intents as far as creating a country where people could have freedom. Um, at least, I mean, all, they were different. Obviously, they weren't all the same. I mean, and some of them had it. There's a level of naivety I see here with George Washington and also with people who were more involved with esoteric things such as Benjamin Franklin. I think Benjamin Franklin truly believed in freedom of the press. But he was also dabbling in much more in the Freemasonry. Um, so 
this is where this is i mean i don't know that this I, I wouldn't say this is where it starts i think this started before the 1700s but freemasonry as it's modern in its modern form really got super powered up in the 1700s and i find this interesting because this is i'm talking about seven generation cycles this was smack in the middle of the last seventh generation cycle. So we're taught, this is how long these cycles last. You think it's funny to kill the, the two, you know, scions or whatever. I don't know where this came from. This is obviously much older than 1798, the situation that Chris and I were put into. But um, like I said, I know that our families were in this position at least 500 years. And this is only, you know, a little more than 200 years ago. Um, so the next, I believe that the, with Chris, the seventh generation scion before him died around 18, early 1800s, like 1803 or something like that. So, um, then it was Chris next, who was born in 1953. So, um, that's how long you have to wait to get to the next person that, you know, you've all been brainwashed to think is the only person that can tell the truth. You know, it's, we're not anybody can, but the thing about us is there's enough focus on us that people that I guess, even though it seems like we're blacklisted and shouting, it really feels like I'm shouting into a void, just screaming my lungs out into a void. That's what it feels like. But at the same time, I know I'm being heard. The problem is you have been trained not to listen to me. You have been trained to ignore me. You have been trained to abuse me. You have been trained to put me down. You have been trained to, um, I mean, that's what it appears like. And um, you've been trained to stay in a cycle and you've been trained that that's going to be good for you. And you've been trained not to listen to the things that I'm saying, even though the things that I'm saying are the truth. So um, if you succeed in getting rid of me and maybe you get some kind of payoff for it, you're going to be stuck in this. I don't know how you're going to get out of this. And by get out of this, I mean, you've got, you're listening to me right now. You can pretty much bet that you've been implanted with biomedical implants and you're subject to assassination. And so is your whole family. That's the truth. So do you want to be like that? This is the thing that I don't understand. Because I know that some people who are who are gunning for us know that. That's the thing that boggles my mind. Barack Obama, I'm looking at you. Again, I'm looking at you a lot. I'm trying to figure out what the heck your brain is doing. But the other problem with these, I mean, I'm serious. I am literally freaking serious. The other thing about these implants is, um, and I'm, I, 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 I don't think I pick on him too much because, because I, he had a chance to help me in 2014. He choose, chose to do the opposite. So, um, why? I can't even get an answer to why. I think that um I think that um one of the big problems is how these these biomedical implants are used to influence human brains, right? Thinking. There's other things. I mean, there's other types of mind control going on than just the direct biomedical implant control of brains, but that seems to be it's hard to believe how powerful this is because you don't know that it's going on. You're engaged in certain types of thinking processes that might seem logical to you. Um but you're actually you you're actually uh doing something terrible and uh everybody else is doing it so maybe it seems normal it's normalized you know there's a lot of psychological stuff going on here and things like that but um you know it just comes down to this you know if you if you manage to get rid of me you've already gotten rid of chris he didn't deserve it if you manage to get rid of me how do you think you're going to get out of this so I'm going to stop this one now. But this is this is the beginning of me talking about the 9/11 attacks because the 9/11 attacks are directly related to this kind of thing. They could not pull the 9/11 attacks off without your silence and these kinds of um this kind of attitude that um whatever the heck kind of attitude is that allows this kind of thing to run rampant in this country. 
um, because the the 9-11 attacks were widely known ahead of time. I just don't know how much was known. And but what I what I had figured out and what I'm going to what I'm going to talk about, I kind of, I'm, I'm part of the reason why I'm back on that now is because I know there's a few reasons. One, I know that if, if these are not exp part of the reason why I'm stuck is because of the 9-11 attacks, because there's too many people in government that are hiding this still. Um, the truth matters. Um, and the 9-11 attacks somehow, in ways that are still a bit confusing to, well, a bit, it's fairly confusing to me, are tied with people around me, lots of people around me, including the honey traps that I was set up with. Um, and it appears even family members, but I don't know to the what extent. It's hard to know how much this is just tied by symbolism and how much this is tied by people are actively knew what was going to happen and somehow engaged in some kind of deals around it. So, um, that's going to be my next, because I did, I did figure out, I've been saying that they were planned for 15 years, but I now can tell that they were planned for at least 25 years, the 9-11 attacks. So, um, so that's what I'm going to talk about next.